Professor John Bannister Goodenough is an American material scientist, a solid-state physicist, and a Nobel laureate in chemistry. Goodenough was born on July 25, 1922 in Jena, Germany to American parents. During and after graduating from Yale University, Goodenough served as a U.S. military meteorologist in World War II. He went on to obtain his PhD in physics at the University of Chicago, become a researcher at MIT Lincoln Laboratory, and later the head of the Inorganic Chemistry Laboratory at the University of Oxford. Prof. Goodenough is a professor of mechanical engineering and material science at the University of Texas at Austin since 1986. He is widely credited with the identification and development of the lithium-ion battery for developing the good enough Kanamori rules in determining the sign of the magnetic superexchange in materials and for seminal developments in computer random access memory. Professor Goodenough has been awarded the National Medals of Science John B. Goodenough 2011 National Medal of Science to John B. Goodenough, University of Texas, Austin, for groundbreaking cathode research that led to the first commercial lithium-ion battery, which has since revolutionized consumer electronics with technical applications for portable and stationary power. The Copley Medal, the Fermi Award, the Draper Prize, and the Japan Prize. The John B. Good Enough Award in Material Science is named for him. The 2014 Draper Prize for Engineering is awarded to Yoshio Nishi, John B. Goodenough, Akira Yoshino, Rashid Yazami for the development of the lithium-ion battery. In 2019, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry alongside M. Stanley Withingham and Akira Yoshino. And at 97 years old, he became the oldest Nobel laureate in history. the 1970s the uh, there was a problem of exposing the dependence of the western world on imported oil in the early days people were in reversibly inserting lithium between the ms2 layers of sulfides so that was the idea and when you insert between layers it's called intercalation, meaning that intercalation means insertion between layers, okay? And so uh, they had TIS-2, and uh, they were going to, the people were examining the chemistry of lithium insertion extraction from TIS-2 back in the 1960s. I started with lithium cobalt oxide because it was a layered compound with ordering of the lithium and cobalt in alternate layers. And I understood or I investigated how much lithium I could take out of the lithium cobalt oxide before it changed its structure. And I found I could take out over half of the lithium from the lithium cobalt oxide without us changing its structure and I could have therefore a reversible lithium insertion extraction oxide as against lithium insertion extraction sulfide to give me higher voltages. But I started with the lithium cobalt oxide and then a man from South Africa by the name of Michael Thackeray came to my uh, <coughs> office in uh, Oxford and said I want to use the magnetite because that's a cheap material for lithium and insertion extraction. And I said, well, I would like to see if you could do it in my laboratory because normally the spinels are line phases. And so I'm surprised that you can put lithium 
in and out of magnetite and, and still have the same structure. So he did that in my laboratory, and then I said, well, that's fine, but what you need to do is to go to a manganese material so you can put the lithium in and out without <clears throat> having to push some of the lithium out as a, a separate phase on the surface. So that's how we, Mike Thackeray and I started to work on the manganese, lithium manganese oxides. There is a so-called inductive effect in which you get a very strong sulfur oxygen bond in the sulfate, and that is able to reduce the energy of the iron three, iron two plus redox couple. And so I wanted to be able to, to get a higher voltage. And so I wanted to be able to lower the energy of the iron three plus iron two plus redox couple. And so you go to a sulfate the sulfur has a strong sulfur oxygen bond, and that then makes you have a more ionic bond with the iron, and it, the lower the energy of the iron three plus two plus couple and increase the voltage. The question is do you want three dimensional insertion of the lithium? Or in this particular case, you had one dimensional insertion, but fortunately, that material comes as flat plates, so that the plates are rather thin, so you can do one-dimensional insertion extraction in the iron phosphate. How can we liberate modern society from its dependent upon the energy and fossil fuels? And that is something we would like to be able to do. We would like to be able to use the energy from the sun and store it in, in the batteries so that then we could have stored electric power in the battery and emancipate ourselves from the energy stored in a fossil fuel, because when you burn the fossil fuel, the CO2 goes into the atmosphere and contributes to global warming and all the other problems we have. First of all, we have to learn to harvest the energy that comes to us daily from the sun. And that's really rather dispersed. Now, nature does it in plants and trees. But we'd like to find another way to do it. So we would like to, to take the wind energy and the radiant solar energy, which you can convert into electric power and store it in a battery. With the flammable liquid electrolytes that you have in today's batteries, if you have a short circuit that goes through as a result of lithium dendrites that penetrate from the anode to the cathode, that short circuit the battery, you get a fire. And we, you don't want fires on the roads. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a safety hazard. It is important to find out how you can plate and strip an alkali ion anode in the battery that is, does not grow dendrites. Science, because we believe that by doing fundamental research, we can find applications that will be very useful for society. And I think curiosity is very important. And so being able to satisfy your curiosity is fun. Is science fun? <laughs> it's hard work, but it's satisfying when you get a good answer. <laughs>